Hello and welcome to this tutorial on WAN clocking and the CSU DSU. So if you have a leased circuit from a service provider, you need to plug it into something and that's where the CSU DSU comes into play. So we're going to take a look at the channel service unit, data service unit, and see why we need it. And we'll, in doing so, we're going to take a look at leased lines and the concept of clocking and we'll figure out why we need clocking, and then we'll see how the CSU-DSU fits into that equation, into that need. So this diagram covers most of the components involved when we talk about WAN connectivity or leased lines. If you haven't yet, check out the tutorial on what is a WAN, where we cover uh, the overall picture. Here we're just gonna focus on the CSU-DSU. So the CSU-DSU, channel service unit, data service unit, is where your leased line from the telco plugs in. So imagine that's our leased line and it's plugged into the CSU DSU. The CSU DSU would then be plugged into the router. So that's the way it used to be. These days, the CSU DSU more commonly is built into the router. Specifically, it's built into a card on the router and that's usually a serial line card. And so on that card is the CSU DSU functionality and so because of that, the circuit from the telco provider, the service provider, plugs directly into the router itself. This combination, though, whether it is two separate pieces or if it's just one piece, is referred to as the CPE. And that is client premise equipment, meaning it's your equipment. It doesn't belong to the service provider. They don't manage it. They don't have access to it. You as a network administrator have access to it. You're responsible for it. And the company you work for actually owns it and operates it. Depending on what kind of circuit we've ordered, the clocking will be different. So what is clocking? Well, first understand that circuits come in different speeds. And we have a tutorial dedicated to the different types and speeds of circuits. But you might have heard of things like T1, T3. So that speed is referred to as, as the clock rate, the clock rate or the bandwidth or the speed of the circuit. Um, the clock rate has to do with that speed, how fast each side talks to each other. And so the CSU-DSU has to be talking the same clock rate or the same speed as the devices on the service provider network and the CSU-DSU at the other end of the circuit in order for everyone to work together. So this matching of the clock rates across all of the pieces of equipment involved is known as synchronization. You can think of it in terms of, you know, everyone has to have the same rhythm. We all have to be in the same step. We're all synchronized. And, um, you know, that's, that's the way it works. If one piece is out of sync with the others, then you get trouble on the circuit. And troubleshooting that can be a real pain. So... The telco provider has their equipment provisioned here as well, and that's usually a WAN switch of some kind, and it's it's on both ends. And then in between, the circuit is actually provisioned to a number of different hops along the service provider network and eventually pops out on the other WAN switch, and then it's connected. The telco provider on the WAN switch sets the clocking. And the CSU-DSU is responsible for matching it. So you can think of the service provider as the master and the CSU-DSU is the slave, meaning the CSU-DSU has to match the master. It's not the other way around. We don't negotiate it. We don't call up the telco and say, hey, what do you think? No, they tell us what it's going to be. We need to make sure our equipment is properly configured. So if the CSU DSU is properly configured, then it communicates to the router and then the router knows when to send and when to expect to receive data based on the clocking or the speed of the circuit. So not to confuse things, but the CSU DSU, although it's getting its clocking, it's learning what the clocking should be from the telco provider, it turns around and tells the router what the clocking should be. And so we have to introduce two new terms here, uh, which are important to know. So the first one is data communications equipment, or DCE. 
So that would be the CSU DSU. And the DCE is that which provides the clocking. So the CSU DSU learns it from the telco provider, and then it turns around and tells the router what the clocking should be. So the other side of that is the DTE, or data terminal equipment, and that is the router itself. And that is the device that receives clocking. It needs to learn it, and it receives it. So if you hear those two terms come up in regard to a CSU, DSU, and a router, um, just keep in mind which is which. Okay, so to summarize, we know that the CSU, DSU connects uh, to a leased line from the service provider. And in order for a circuit to work, it has to be in sync with the other devices on the service provider network. Specifically, we're talking about clocking. And clocking is the speed of a circuit, how much data uh, is sent through it the bandwidth or the speed, the clocking, all the same terms roughly, and it determines when I should send, when I should receive. And all the devices have to know that. They all have to be in the same page. They have to be synchronized. So the CSU DSU is responsible for participating in that and being configured properly to match the clocking of the service provider. Finally, we talked about two new terms, the DCE and the DTE. The CSU, DSU, and the router itself. And that's it. That is the tutorial on the CSU, DSU, and WAN clocking. Thanks for watching.